Okay, so as we start out in here, before I'm doing anything else, before I come in here and start up with Xcode or whatever, I want to show you what the final project, ideally, when we get done, is supposed to look like. There's only one project in Chapter 6. It's called View Switcher. It's a very, as, as many of the projects have been in here, it's a very simplistic project. You'll notice right away when we look at it, a couple things have changed. First of all, we have nothing called ViewController.Swift. They take the original view controller and they rename it. And that's not just a matter of clicking on it and changing the name. There's more that you have to do than that. Okay? Plus, there's two other controllers. What happens with this program, this controller right here is literally just that. It really and truly is a view controller. When you bring the program up, the screen is going to be blue because the blue view controller comes up. There's a, a regular button on there that says, click me or press me. And if you click it, it says, yep, I did. I, I'm in the blue view controller or something along those lines. All right. Then down on the bottom of the screen here, there'll be a toolbar with a button in it that's called switch views. And if you click that button, you'll go from a blue view controller to one that's yellow. Looks just the same as the other one does. All right. But you can, you can click that button that's down in the toolbar, and you can switch back and forth between the two views. Does that make sense? All right. And the way that he has decided to do it in here is he said, well, we could have just, right from the get-go, we could have chosen and said that we wanted to basically create an app with multiple views, but let's do it manually by hand. So in case you ever want to do it that way, you can. So that's the way that the author does it in here. So again, I'm just going to follow his steps. So if I bring up the storyboard, all right, it looks a little funky when you take a look at it. All right, there's two view controllers in here. And you notice right now, if, if I bring that up enough, okay, you see how you've got the arrow right here? And that arrow is kind of going to both of them. When you take a look at it, it's telling you they're both hooked up to the main view controller. That's what the system is letting you know. The one that's blue in color... All right, the one that's blue in color, come on. that's the blue view controller. The one that's yellow in color, that's the yellow view controller. I don't know why, I don't know what happened to the name of it, but there's a press me button on here. There's a press me to button on here. All right, and the main view controller doesn't look, whoops, sorry, didn't want to double click that. That's where we're going to put a lot of our code in, okay? And I found out, I think I told you this before, but I was going and copying a lot of the code right from the book and throwing it in here. And I don't know if because it was in the book, some of it was bolded and the like. It had a tendency not to work. So it's much more laborious to type the code in manually, okay? That said, it appears to work much better when you type the code in manually, all right? So I'll take the laboriousness and have it take me maybe an hour later or an hour longer to finish it, knowing that I'm the one that's keying the stuff in. All right. So if we come in here and we run it, And for all of you who, who say, you know, this is really hard, I don't have time, I don't this, I, I, I do understand that. Just for the hell of it, on Saturday, I literally went in and typed in um, calculator and Swift. I went YouTube and did that, and I found a video this kid made. He must be, he looks like he could be from India, but I'm not sure. I would guess he's between 10 and 12. Couldn't believe how good it was. And he has absolutely no training. He said he just sat down and decided one day he was going to teach himself Swift. I don't even know if he had a book. But he built a calculator, and it's fine. It doesn't look that different than the one I did. 
It's not S functional, but it's got just the add, subtract, multiply, and divide on it, but it works just fine. Right, he did stuff I wouldn't do. He says stuff, if you listen to his, the, the thing that goes with it, it's about 15 minutes long. I watched it. He said 50 likes and no, no, no dislikes, which is interesting anyway when you, you, know, when you watch those things. But what was, what was funny is he says some stuff in there that's just flat out wrong. But he's a kid, you know, and he's got no training. So you got to take it for what it's worth, but I thought it was pretty well done. Of course, I don't know which one of these it is. All right, so notice where it says switch views right here. This is a toolbar down at the bottom. All right, when I click switch views, is that pretty obvious what just happened there? All right. Now, you see, you, know, you press the button. Yep, I did. I didn't write that. I, that was his code. All right? So you click on that, and notice if I switch back again, and I go to the blue, and I do it, the same kind of thing happens. All right? So again, not grand, not glorious, not a whole lot of stuff, but again, functional, and he shows the kind of stuff that you have to do when you're doing this. All right? Just a little prelude for you very quickly. In the next chapter that we'll go over a week from today, he uses what's called the picker control. You all know what a picker is because you've all used a picker at some time or another to pick out a date, for example. But he's got, a, he's got a, an app that he's going to have five different view controllers that bring up five different pickers that do different things. And you might like it for no other reason because the last one he builds a simple slot machine. And he has that in there. So I suppose if you get really bored, that'll give you something to do. All right. All right, so I'm going to stop. I'm going to close this project. Okay, just close this. I don't need that anymore. Before I start it up, uh, just very quickly then to go over this, because the first umpteen pages in here, however many pages that is, but the first several pages, what they do is they talk about common types of view controllers. And what the author says right here is, what we've done so far has been fine. But by and large, when you work, when you use an app, a game, whatever, of any significance, the chances are pretty good it's going to have more than one screen. And everything we've done thus far has had one screen. So he says it's time to progress and move on a little bit. So that's what he's starting to do right now. All right, and he gives some examples. He says, he talks about a utility app. You've all seen different apps where you've got some kind of a screen, regardless of what it is. And if you want more information about it, you click a button and you go to another screen. That type of an idea. All right, so he talks about that. Then he talks a little bit about tab bars. I'm purposely going through this part very quickly because there's no sense in spending a lot of time on it. All right. Then he talks about navigation bars. And he says, really, with all this stuff, and it really shouldn't matter too much whether you've got an iPhone or you've got a Nexus or something else, okay? You've all seen stuff like this, where you're clicking in here and you click sounds and it'll, you, know, you click on sounds or whatever. You can go from one screen to the other. That's what he's talking about here, all right? He gives some more examples working with music, and he says sometimes you've got different things. You've got tab controls and navigation controls. All right. So he says mobile Safari has a toolbar at the bottom. All right. So again, this is what I'm saying is there's not really a whole heck of a lot that's in here so far that he's talked about that's new. All right. That's the first five or six or seven pages. Then here, the architecture of a multi-view app. Again, notice the app that he's going to build is called View Switcher. It's simple in appearance. However, as it says, for the code we're going to write, it's the most complex thus far. There'll be three different uh, controllers, a storyboard, and you'll do some work for the first time in the application delegate. So you've already seen this. When it comes up, it's blue. And if you press the switch view as it goes to yellow, if you press the button that says press me, it gives you that information. So he, he just showed you, he shows you that. So if you press the switch views, it brings up the yellow view. All right. And if you click the button 
On the yellow view, it brings that up. And if you click the button on the blue one, it does a similar thing. So again, it's like, yeah, I spent maybe five minutes on that, but that's the first, I don't know, 10 or 11 pages of the chapter. And there's nothing wrong with the stuff he talks about. But I didn't think it would really pay to sit there and go through that in any more depth and breadth of coverage than we just did. So I'm on the bottom of page 183, talking about the root controller. All right. As he says, the storyboard is a key player here. We're going to create a storyboard with an instance of a controller class responsible for managing which view is shown currently to the user. They call that the root control. All right. And I don't think we need to talk anymore about root. They say as in the root of the tree or the root of all evil. I guess that's a little joke. I don't know. All right. Notice here, in a multi-view app, the job of the root controller is to take two or more other views and present them to the user when appropriate. So, for instance, all right, I showed you before that calculator, all right, and if you, you know, the, the regular Windows calculator, and if you, if you bring up the regular Windows calculator, you don't have to do it, but if you bring it up, all right, under view, under the menu there, they've got standard, scientific, programmer, and a bunch of other stuff. And the one that comes up is standard. If you go to scientific, what happens? You immediately go to landscape mode. You get a bunch of keys that you didn't have on there before. And they've got sine, cosine, and a bunch of other stuff. All right? So what you could do is instead of even having it come up with a standard calculator at the beginning, you could literally come up and, and use, use your root controller, for lack of better words, you could kind of use it as sort of a jumping off point, a table of contents, or whatever you want to call it, a splash screen even, if you wanted to do that, and then go from page to page. He doesn't do that here. He says, hey, I've really only got two different views that I want to show to the user, one that's blue and one that's yellow. So even though I've got a root controller that's going to be in charge of everything, the, the job of the root controller is to, when the program starts, is to bring up the blue one and show that switching views button on the bottom. So if the user clicks it, they'll go to the yellow one. All right. Now, you may not like his my words as opposed to his, but that, that's what he talks about on this page. All right. Just a, a little bit of terminology here. Middle of page 184 where he says, anatomy of a content view. And the reason, again, that this stuff is at least somewhat important is you'll see this as you go on and you're working with this stuff and as you go and read some of the stuff that's in here. But notice what he says. In a multi-view app, each view controller contains a, controls a content view. And these content views are where the bulk of your app's use UI is built. Taken together, each of these pairings is called a scene within a storyboard. Now, back in the days before you had this storyboard file, when you had this nib or zip file, you talked about scenes up the wazoo. And the reason I'm bringing that up is you still see that in some books and you still see some people talking about that. Notice when the root controller switch views button is pressed, the root controller will swap out the blue and swap in the yellow, or swap out the yellow and swap in the, view, the blue, depending on which one is currently up there. All right? So that's basically its job. So I'm just going to follow his verbiage here. So I'm on the bottom of page 184, and I'm going to just do what he does. It says, enough theory. So let's select file new project, again, single view app, and call it view switcher. So again, I'm going to go, th go through and do everything that he's doing in here. Now, I believe I've already got a view switcher. I'm not sure where I put it. I don't want to sit there and figure it out right now. So I'll give it the old view switcher 2, which I don't think I have. All right. Same stuff that we've been setting up previously. Click Next. I'll just throw it wherever. I guess it's under my Documents folder. That's fine. I'll move it later if I have to. All right. You've seen this screen at the beginning. I'm just going to jump right into the storyboard. So I'm on the top of page 185. And the author says here, what you see right here is what you get by default with this. You get your app delegate Swift file, you get your view controller Swift file, and you get your storyboard. All right. Again, we're going to want to add two more view controllers, 
and we want to rename the one that's called viewcontroller.swift. All right. And he says there's a good news and bad news here. This is a, take it right from this handout here on 185. And I, I wish I would have done more research on it, but I didn't. Like we have those of you who are in, in the Java class, the Android class, which is most of you, all right, one of the things that we, we know how to do is you know how to refactor something. All right, in other words, you know how you can right mouse click if you, if you want to change the name of a class. You can double click on the class name, right mouse click, choose refactor, and rename it. Well, there's a similar feature in here, but the author says that when he wrote the book, it wasn't supported by Swift. It's, it's, an, it's a, an Apple feature that wasn't supported by Swift. I didn't check to see if it now is supported. Sorry about that. So he says, let's just make it easy. So what he does is he says, you see this view controller file down right here? And I say, yeah. And he goes, let's get rid of it. So let's just move it to the trash. So right now, we've got no view controller file whatsoever. All right? So that's the first thing that he has you do. All right? So he says, now right click and... Again, I, I guess that I just have a Windows mentality because when he tells you to right-click, I have nothing but problems using two fingers to do this or two fingers to do that. I just do. All right, you say, well, that, you're a derelict. Okay, then I'm a derelict. But sometimes it works really well for me, and sometimes it doesn't. So I clicked on here. I eventually was able to right-mouse click, choose new file, all right, and... As it says, you, what you want to do is you want to come up in here and under the Cocoa Touch class, right where we are, all right, under the iOS section, so iOS, Cocoa Touch, it says we want to create a brand new class. Okay, so I'm going to click Next. And it says, what do you want to call this? Again, I'm just following the steps, the steps rather that are in the book. And rather than View Controller, we're going to call that Switching View Controller. Again, I'm following the steps that are in the book. You want it to be a subclass of UI view controller. We've already done that. It says make sure that the create zip file is not checked. Because if you do that, it, it's going to try to create a new storyboard for you. We want to use the existing storyboard. That's the good news. We can use the existing storyboard. The bad news is we have to tell the system to link that new view controller that we're creating up to our storyboard. It's not hard. We'll go through it in just a minute. All right. All right, it says press next. Basically, in here it's saying, do you want it kind of shoved in where you've got everything else? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to click create. All right. Now, that there's good news and bad news about what I just did. I thought I followed the what he had in the book. That's the good news. Bad news is I wanted it to be here, and it's down here. See that? So I manually moved it. Now, that's why I said, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I've tried this a bunch of different times. Okay, so I just took it, this new switching view controller, I clicked on it, dragged, and told it to go in here. And now it's okay. And it appeared to work fine doing it like that. Okay, so again, if I did something wrong, guess what? I did something wrong. All right, so I've done everything through the middle of page 186. The author says, now that we have our new view controller, we need to add it to the storyboard. So they tell you to select storyboard. And what you notice when you look in there, there's nothing in there. All right, we've created a new view controller, but we have yet to link our existing storyboard to that view controller. So that's what he has you do halfway down on page 186. All right, All right. he says, select main storyboard in document outline. That's what I just did. It says, you'll see that the template created a view controller for us. We need to link our switching view controller class to that. It says, select the view controller in the document outline. So select the view controller in the document outline. All right. And then it says, open the identity inspector. Well, I've got to come back over here. Whoops. That's okay. All right, so I want to bring up the identity inspector, but I want to bring up the identity inspector for this. All right? Boy, when you know it, I did this at home, and boy, it was slick as heck. 
but whatever, we'll get it to work. You'll see that the you know, you select the view controller in the document outline form, which is what I had done. And open the identity inspector. Well, this is this is a reason why I, I tried to do these, and I'd rather have you watch than try to try to follow along because the chances of, of you doing something and having it work exactly the same way that I have it work are pretty minimal. All right. So I'm clicking on the view controller right there. You can see I get that stuff around it. I want to go up to the identity inspector right there. Okay. All right. And it says change the class from UI view controller, which we've got in here. All right. We want to change it to switching view controller. Well, this isn't a great start, but hopefully when I start typing, it'll fill in. As now, if you check in the document outline, you should see that the view controller's name is changed to switching view controller. That's what I goofed up on. That's what I wanted to click was there. Thank you. That's the one that should change to switching view controller. All right. And see how it changed? Boom. All right. Okay says we need to add two additional view controllers so we do them the same way, okay? And it's not, like, again, this is not hard. We're going to create two different things. They're going to be exactly identical to one another. One is going to be called blue view controller. One is going to be called yellow view controller. And as we start putting stuff in there, for lack of better words, it's going to look real funky. You can lay stuff on top of other things. It really and truly doesn't matter. Maybe you saw that when I brought the first one up, and that was the authors. And the blue one was way up here, and then covering up part of it at the bottom was the yellow one. That's okay. That's not how they're going to look when you run them. It's just that you've got a limited amount of real estate, all right, to try to put in what you want to put in there. All right? All right. So we're told, again, to right mouse click on here. Again, new file, same kind of thing we just did. Come over to here, and we want to call, it doesn't matter which one you do first. I think they have you do blue view controller first, but it really and truly doesn't matter. So there's blue view controller. Next. And I'm sure that it's right here that somehow I'm screwing the group up, but that's fine. I'll just move it in a minute. All right, and I'm going to do one more. and put in yellow view controller. Then I'm going to grab both of these, or one at a time, it doesn't matter, move them back up so they're all underneath here. Now, I'm sure that if you had somebody much more well-versed in this than me, they'd tell you that, oh yeah, Jeff, all you did was you should have done this, and you didn't. Well, I didn't. But do you understand what we've just done? Does that make sense to everyone? All right, basically, you can look at the equivalent. We just created three new files. All right. Okay. All 
All right, so I'm in the middle of page 187. It says the switching view controller class will need an action method that's going to allow it to toggle between the views. Now, when we do this, we're going to set up a couple of properties. All right, and again, they mention this in the book. Probably is worth me just showing you this in the book here. It's on near the bottom of page 187. Again, it's kind of tough to just jump back and forth between all these things all the time. All right, so we've changed it to switching view controllers. We added the two new ones. We've done all that. So I'm down toward the bottom here of page 187. And as he says, this class will need an action method that will allow it to toggle between those two views. It says we won't create any outlets, but we'll need two properties. All right, one for each of the view controllers. So he has you manually come in and key these in. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to go to the class switching view controller right here, and I'm going to key in those two lines. All right. Then it says that uh, these don't need to be outlets. Yeah, I add the following property declaration. Then it says add the following action definition to the bottom of the class. Again, what he does here is he adds it, just types in the code. Then he goes back and adds it. As opposed to control dragging the way that we've been doing it in the past, He's showing you that there's yet another way of doing it. All right. So we're going to go through all the stuff that he's got here on the bottom part of page 187. So I'm in switching view controller, and right near the top up here, we want uh, private var. And another one with yellow var. Now think about a couple things as far as what we're doing here. All right, we're creating local variables in our switching view controller, and what are they? All right, remember these are their names. These are their types. All right, we just created a brand new view controller that we called blue view controller. We just created a brand new view controller that we called yellow view controller. So we, when we want to manipulate them programmatically, these are the variables that we're going to use. Does that make sense? We don't know it's possible when we've set this up as we're going back and forth, we may or may not have already created a yellow view controller. In other words, when we first start the program, all right, we don't really have a yellow view controller there yet. We don't get the yellow one until we click that switching views button. Does that make sense? Because this is kind of an important concept. What he tells you is, and we'll get into this a little bit later in here, but what he tells you is he uses a process that's oftentimes used in apps that's called lazy loading. And for lack of better words, what he's saying is lazy loading means you don't load something into memory until you need it. And if you don't need it anymore, get rid of it. Because you've got a limited amount of memory anyway in most mobile devices. So what he ends up doing is when he loads the blue one into memory, he kind of tells that one to go to sleep and go away. Then when he brings the other one in, he tells that one to go to sleep and go away. Does that make sense? All right. And he explains it much better than I just did, but I just kind of gave you the highlights. And he'll talk about it. And I'll, when we get to that page in the book, I'll show you where it is. All right. So he says then, add the following action method at the bottom of the class. And well, I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. Okay. I'm going to go to right here. So we're, we're putting this in here right now. Now, hopefully that's going to go away in just a minute, and that should be fun. Not fun. Okay, that's, that's one thing. But uh, just as we get going, again, we're manually typing this in. But before we, we, we do and go through that, I just want to mention this to you, because I never really talked much about that last semester. See where that says mark right there? What you can do 
and again, you need, to, you need to hear this from somebody much more well-versed in this than I am, but what you can do is you can take your program and you can kind of like put bookmarks in your program so you can mark sections. And the reason you might want to do that, there's a lot of them, but one reason is if you had different people working on the same project and somebody was doing this section of it and somebody was doing that section of it, you can mark sections of code. So basically what, you, what you're doing here is you're saying that's where that begins and you can put an end block in there too. All right? Again, that should be funk, not fun. Okay, well that looks a little better. So it says here, I'm on the bottom of page 187. In the past, we've added action methods directly with Interface Builder. But here you'll see that we can work the other way around as well, since Interface Builder can see what outlets and actions are already defined in our source code. Now that we've declared the method, we can set up the minimal user interface for this controller in the storyboard. So he shows you, all right, and he'll show you how to do that in, in a little bit. Okay? I thought he showed it now, but I guess it's a little bit later. All right. So when we come back in here and we come back into our storyboard, okay, and it's still not looking exactly the way I want it to look, but hopefully we'll, we'll fix it up. And by the time we get done with class today, it'll be looking the way that it's supposed to look. All right? Okay. So he says, now what we need to do is for our switching view right here, what we want to do is we want to add a new tool that we haven't looked at before. And that new tool is a toolbar. Bless you. And he tells you that when you put this in, drag it, put it snugly so it's right up against the corner and right on the bottom, right there. See that? In other words, there's no margin or anything like that. Literally just put the thing in there like that. And then double click on it. He has you do this later, but I just you might as well do it now. And change the text to switching views. Now when you look at that, it looks like, well, you're off the screen now, Jeff. That's not what you wanted to do. But notice when you hit enter, it flips back into view. All right? And we're going to have to put some programmatic some programming in there, which is going to allow that to switch between the blue view that will come up naturally at the beginning and the yellow view. Okay? So that's what we're going to do in just a little bit. So he says you need to do this as a reminder. This root, the, again, what we have on the screen right now, the switching view controller is our root view controller. Its job is to sit and flip back and forth between blue and yellow, blue and yellow, blue and yellow. All right? So it says, let's build the toolbar now. Well, I just did it. It says, go to the storyboard, all right, drag out a toolbar and put it in there snugly. I did all that stuff, all right? Now, the next thing he says is, he says, make sure you highlight the toolbar. Oh, make sure the toolbar is highlighted, all right? He says, we want to make sure this toolbar is stretched across the bottom of the screen no matter how far, you know, the, the view goes. So it says to do this, select the toolbar in the document outline, which is right here. All right, then it says click the pin button. We all know what that is by now. And it says change the values in the pop up to those that are shown on the top of page 190. All right, so he says here put this at, again, I'm, I, this, these are his values, not mine. All right. We want a zero here, and a zero here, and a zero here. All right, and I think I've, somehow I've lost this. So why aren't you letting me type anything in? Well, what I'm trying to do is type in a zero here, a zero here, and a zero here. For some reason right now, it's not letting me type. It's 3.48. Let's take a break and come back at 4, and hopefully between now and 4 o'clock, I can figure out why it's not letting me type that in. All right. <laughs> 